Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I've been working on my Thompson surface grinder, uh, the big grinder that I brought into the shop recently. Been trying to get it restored and kind of back into being able to use it. Uh, just more or less cosmetic stuff for the most part. I'm probably gonna end up doing some scraping on it before it's said and done. Uh, but just trying to get it up to speed. But in the process of taking it apart and putting it back together, I found a couple of gears that have some issues. And this is on the uh, hand wheel on the front that you, where you manually move the table back and forth. In that mechanism, there's a two gears that mesh with one another. And I don't know what happened, but at some point in time, it kind of broke some stuff over and crammed some stuff in there. It's a mess. And uh, basically this big gear and it's mating little small spur gear here, both need to be remade because they're not really working as they should right now. So um, we're just gonna make new, new gears. I mean, uh, ordering parts for this machine is probably futile to even try. And if I did, the price is no telling what they would cost. And this is a fairly simple uh, job out here in the shop to cut a couple of new gears. So let me zoom in here, show you the problem. And uh, we're gonna get over on the lathe, start roughing out some blanks and get over to the middle machine and cutting some gear teeth. Let's get her done. So these are the two gears. Uh, this one here is a one piece gear, it kind of just has that little piece on the back. So we'll just rough that in. It's got a bronze sleeve bushing on the inside. But right here in these two teeth, it looks like it broke over and kind of mashed it down in there and kind of pressed a piece in there doesn't want to come out, but um, that's an issue for sure. We need to get that taken care of. And this gear uh, meshes with the smaller gear over here. And if you look, there's several gears where it looks like it's been running up over those that rough bottom down there. And anyway, this needs to be replaced as well. This gear here is pressed into the larger gear. So we'll go up to the press, press this one out and make a new one we'll be able to salvage the uh, outside gear, but we'll replace the smaller inside one. So that's the game plan. Um, you know, are these repairable? You know, people always say, well, you should just repair those rather than make new gears. Honestly, a repair job on this would probably be acceptable, but um, uh, I just feel like I can make a new gear without too much more trouble and I don't have to worry about it. So that's what I'm choosing to do. That's my choice. Um, right, wrong, and different. That's what I'm going to do. We're just going to make a totally new gear. So let's, uh, I'm going to press that bushing out first and uh, probably go ahead and press this one out as well. And then let's uh, see about making some new blanks and we'll go from there. I'm over at the Arbor Press and what I want to do is press this little brass bushing out. I just made a little tool here over on the lathe, nothing fancy. Just fits down inside of this. And I got, should be able to just push that through and have clearance all the way through. So like I said, that's just a couple of minutes on the lathe. And uh, yeah, we'll just press it right out. There we go. That bushing is out. And that comes right out as well. Let me get the other gear and get it separated as well. Now this one's got a bigger brass bushing in there. We need to press it out in this direction. So let's see, if I slide it around this way. That'll catch the outside of that. Should let me push it out. Hopefully the center part comes out and the brass bushing stays in. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> there it goes. And there we go, we need to make that piece as well. And oh, I missed that. Uh, there's a couple of uh, set screws in this that hold that in place. I did not notice that. Ripped them out on the way out, but we're replacing that gear anyway, so no big deal. Hopefully I can get those to back off. All right, we'll deal with that. This original gear is cast iron, so I got a piece of Dura bar here that we're going to be making this out of. So this is an extruded cast iron material. Um, could I use steel? Sure. But uh, I don't like to re-engineer stuff. They made the original out of cast iron. That's what we're going to make this one out of. We'll start by uh, facing this. We're 
good there. And now what I want to do is I want to turn uh, this small diameter first. And I'm just going to basically turn it out. It's going to be a little bit longer than what it needs to be, but I'll face it off later. I want to have a little bit extra there for gripping in the chuck when I spin this thing around. So uh, we're going to go ahead and cut that in. This is inch and an eighth diameter, so one inch, 125 thou. And like I said, we're just going to go in until just shy of hitting the jaws here on the, the depth of the cut. Got a lot of material to take out of there. So uh, I'm gonna chip away at it. We'll bring you guys back here in a minute. All right, let's get a measurement on that. All right, let's see where we're at. So I am at one inch, 177 thousandths. Gonna dial in one inch 125. This is not a critical measurement, by the way. It's just a clearance for the gear that's behind it, but uh, we'll get it pretty close. Whatever it is, is what it's gonna be, but uh, we'll measure it and see where we're at. Once we get down to the bottom here, what I'm gonna do is uh, We'll come out and face out that back side there to smooth it all out as well. So we'll go on in and I'm just going to pull my cutter out. And I'm going to have to take another pass there. Whoop. more time that's good um, well I'm gonna trim that off I was gonna go ahead and put a little relief on that but all that's got to be machine more so next step is we need to drill our hole through this I need a 7 8 inch hole so let me get set up for that as always with a center drill I just want to get a little dimple there in the middle for that drill bit to start on there we go we're going to start with a uh, pilot hole. I think this is 5 16 I just grabbed a drill bit. We're going to be drilling it out larger. I just want to get a hole all the way through it, a smaller diameter first. All right. I need to end up with a 7 8 inch hole, exactly 7 8 I'm just gonna drill this out. This is one size below that, so it's 55, 60 force. Let's see how this drill bit cuts. I'm gonna take this to my drill sharpener. It's not cutting very good. Let me go put a quick sharpen on that and I'll be right back. All right, I put a fresh grind on that. I also slowed my drill down just a little bit here. Let's see how this cuts. Much better. All right. All right, last step here. We're going to I come in here and uh, run a reamer up in here. This is a 7 8 inch reamer, and it should take that last little bit out and take this hole right to size. We're just taking out about a 64th of an inch, not much at all. So let me just run that all the way through. We should have a nice finish on that bore, and it should be right to size. through. I'm just moving it up the shank there to make sure I get into some good fresh reamer area in case that 
was a little bit dull on the back side. We'll uh, pull it on out now. All right, we are ready to flip this part around now. So um, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take it out and uh, we're gonna flip it around. I'm gonna run my jaws back in and I will just put this in all the way up against the jaw so that it will be running true uh, parallel to those jaws. And then we're gonna face off the other side and get the gear part to the correct thickness. All right, so we've got that in there. I'm just snugging it up again. It's up against the backs of these jaws. So that should uh, have this side running parallel to the other side and we're gonna face that off. Let me figure out how thick that needs to be and we'll get to going. get a good measurement now that we got a face uh, front on that. We're at, it's like we're about 763. Put that in my digital readout. 0.763. And we're going to 625, so I can just watch that on my digital readout and work my way down to where I need to be. All right, this should be the final diameter. Pulling that out. Our final thickness, rather. 625, we're just a tad under, but within tolerance, so uh, we're good. Now, I'm gonna take it back out again. I'm gonna flip it back around and we're gonna shorten this side up to the proper depth as well. So probably should have just gone ahead and done that on the previous setup, but I wanted to have that extra little bit to grip on there while I was turning that, but um, it'll be fine. We'll go ahead and uh, put this back in here. What I'm doing is just kind of bumping this around. I'm trying to get the uh, front or the face of this, even with the face of the jaws, just to make sure I don't have any run out on it. Um, let's see. A little knocker that um, Randy Richards gave me at the Bar Z Bash, putting it to use here. Just taking a little pass and moving my cross slide in just ever so slightly. I don't want to put too much tool pressure on that and uh, get it out of alignment again. Fortunately, that uh, end down there is not going to be running perfectly true with everything else. If it did, I could take a dial indicator and put on the face and tap it around until I got running perfectly true, but it's just a battle not worth fighting here. We're close enough. I'm at about three quarters of an inch, so we got a little bit more to take off. We're getting there. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, we're within a thou. We're good enough. All right. We got our gear blank roughed out. Now we need to get the outside diameter cut. To do that, I'm going to put it on a mandrel or on a arbor, and uh, we'll turn it on that. And that'll also give us something to mount it to while we're cutting our gear teeth over in the dividing head. So let me get that made and we'll finish cutting this thing out and get it ready to go to the, get some teeth cut on it. All right, guys, I didn't really show this, but I just made this little quick arbor to mount this on. This is just three quarter inch with some threads on the end. And 
I also went ahead and put the bushing back in this. I didn't show that either. I just pressed it in, nothing major. Uh, and that way it should fit right up on this three quarter inch shaft. A little snug going over the threads there, but let's see here. Yeah, it's, it's going to go on there. It's just a little, little snug. Must have raised a little burr on those threads, but no big deal. What I'm going to do is we're going to put a nice washer on there. We'll use a nut here on the end. We'll tighten this up and this will allow this to spin on this arbor while we are turning that outside diameter and it should be turning true to the part. All right, so now we can turn our OD and then we'll also mount it on this arbor when we go over to the milling machine to cut the teeth. So let's go ahead and get that OD cut. Starting out here, let's see. About 3.12, about three and an eighth. We're going to 2.917. Let me speed this up just a little bit. I'm gonna come in here and touch off. Let's get a measurement on this and get our DRO set. Looks like we're at about 3.097, 3.097. We'll take her down to size. All right, I got it dialed in to 2.917. This should be the final size. Okay, um, let me deburr those uh, or leave those edges a little bit. And we'll do both sides. I'm gonna go back here and hit this one while I'm in there. I forgot to do it a while ago. And that gear is ready to go to the mill machine and have some teeth cut. Let's go get the mill set up. We are set up over here on the horizontal mill machine, ready to start cutting gears. I didn't go through the setup process this time. I've done that in a lot of my older videos. If you want to see how to set up a um, mill machine to cut uh, gears, go back and look at some of my older videos because I go step by step on it. But I am going to hit kind of the high points here. Got a dividing head here. This is a Kearney Trekker Model K dividing head. It's a five to one ratio. Uh, we're cutting 33 teeth on this particular year. And to get that done, according to my book over there, I'm on a plate that has 66 holes in it. And I will go 10 holes on every tooth. And when I do that five rotations around the dial here, uh, that will give me 33 teeth that so will divide out over here on the on the dividing head. Uh, this is a 12 pitch. Uh, I've got a 12 pitch gear cutter in here, diametral pitch. Uh, for the 33 tooth, this is the, the involute number four. There are eight involute cutters in a set, depending on the number of teeth you're gonna cut to get the right profile. So uh, we've got the number four cutter, and again, 12 uh, diametral pitch. The total depth that we need to cut on this is 183 thousandths of an inch. I've got it centered up on the gear. We're gonna start with a hundred thousandths pass. We'll go completely around and then I'm gonna dial in the other 83 thousandths um, and finish everything up. So we're gonna make two full uh, rounds on the gear to get everything cut to the proper size. I think we are ready to go. Um, like I said, everything is set up. So let's uh, fire this thing up and see where we're at. Just for reference, because I know someone's going to ask, we're set on 96 RPMs and two and five eighths inches per minute is my feed rate. So uh, let's get in here and try it out. And we should be ready to go. We'll start our feed in. 
Like I said, we're taking a hundred thousandths total depth of cut here. And we'll see how that sounds and looks here. So far, so good. <coughs> like it's cutting it just fine we'll make it let it cut all the way through um, I can kind of hear it and I can also put my hand on the mill I kind of feel the vibrations when it quits cutting we'll back out now we're gonna do our first index here so we'll go over 10 teeth 10 holes on our plate I'll relock my dividing head and we'll make our next cut Rinse and repeat. We gotta do this 33 times to go around. Once we do our 33 teeth, we'll have to come back, lower it down um, to the final depth of cut and make one more round of 33 teeth. So uh, we'll make a few more cuts here and we'll cut and bring you guys back in a little bit. If we did everything right, this should be the last hole and it should split the difference right in there, right between them last two teeth and, and where I'm standing, it looks like we nailed it. Come back out. I'm going to go ahead and uh, index back to that first tooth just so that I'm starting from the same place in the next round on the dividing head. And what we need to do is we need to raise our table up that last bit, and that is 83 thousandths. So let me dial that in here 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 1, 2, three right there lock my table down and this should be four final so this will be cutting out the last depth of that those teeth i need to go all the way around again another 33 teeth but this will make the fully formed involute shape of the gear tooth once we cut the one next to this, we'll be able to see that shape there. And we'll go all the way around one more time. This machine probably could have very easily have cut this all in one pass, but uh, I like to take my time. I don't like to put too much stress on my cutters. You know, if this was a production job and we were trying to crank out as many as we could in a day It'd be one thing this is a one-off job and i'd rather take my time and get it right the first time instead of having to start over so 
All right, that should be the first fully formed tooth there now that we've cut the second side of it. And we'll continue on around. Once again, this should be our last tooth. This time it should be the last for real. Should be going to the final depth. And just like that, we are done. Well guys, I cheated on you a little bit on this uh, second gear. I just went and kind of knocked it out. Got it roughed out over there on the middle of the, or on the lathe and uh, got it mounted up over here to cut on the middle machine. Same process that we used before. Uh, exact same process, just different dimensions. Um, this one here, of course, is still a uh, 12 pitch gear, just like before, it will mesh up. Uh, 16 tooth in this case. So uh, we're using a number seven involute cutter, where before I think we were using what, number four. Um, so we had to change the cutter on here, but everything else is pretty much exactly the same. Um, different spacing. I'm on uh, for 16 teeth on my dividing head. I had to go to a different hole pattern. Um, hang on a minute, let me get this one indexed. I'm trying to remember. It was a 96 hole plate, and we're doing 30 holes per uh, tooth. And that gives us the 16 teeth here in the gear. And we've got just a couple of more teeth in here and I think we'll be through cutting this little spur gear and uh, should have all of our gear cutting done and we can hopefully see about getting this thing put together and uh, try her out. So, so we gotta come out one more time here. And I think this is the last tooth. Yep, this one should wrap it up. We'll come through here and uh, I think we'll have it all ready. So anyway, sorry for uh, cheating you guys out of watching me machine that part, but I figured it'd be kind of boring. You've already seen exactly how I did the other one and this one was pretty much the same. Just uh, again, different dimensions. And uh, with that, I think we are just about through right there all right we're done so here's the gear that we made uh the little small gear i did grind a couple flats on this because there's a couple of set screws this press is down in here and that needs to line up with those set screws to right there on the and on the other side to to uh give it a place to register against but we're going to go ahead and just press this in place that should be a nice tight press fit on the press here. All right. And now we will, I go tighten these set screws up and uh, this one, we should be done with uh, machining. All right, here's our two new gears, the small one and the large one. I did stamp the part number on there. This one has A173 on it, so I put that on there as well. Basically, these two gears just kind of mesh like this. Uh, they engage there. This one here, there's just clearance. It doesn't actually come in contact with anything, and this goes on my surface grinder. But I think we are in business. I think we have successfully 
repaired the broken gears and this is ready to fix up and go back on the machine. And now for the real challenge is to see if we can figure out how to put all the stuff back together. So um, I know that this shaft here comes um, through this and the hand wheel actually mounts on the front of it and I think I need to run something down inside that hole and kind of, yeah, it's full of crud. Let me see if I can get that cleaned up because that's a surface that's going to need to rotate. Um, I'll be right back. All right, let's try this again. I just took a uh, drill bit the same size as that hole and just twisted it through there by hand. I'm not going to put the hand wheel on right yet. I want to kind of figure this arrangement out here. So it looks like that gear is going to mount up next. And I got two little stub arbors. These appear to be the same. So um, I've been massaging this gear here for a little bit and I got it running a lot smoother now. It's not perfect by any means, but it is uh, spinning. I think it'll be fine with the hand wheel on there. And honestly, I may end up remaking this gear here as well before it's all said and done. But right now I just want to get this thing put together and kind of try it out. So um, anyway, I got that gear in place. Next, um, I'll put this one over here. I will note on this um, piece here, there's a little oiler on the end and there's a little twisty thing that you flip around and there's a hole. I want that hole to be positioned in the top. You can close it. This thing has got a hole drilled up through it and you can see the oil hole in here where it puts the oil kind of lubricates those gears. So anyway, just kind of showing you that. Um, we'll position those gears where they need to be. And these should all mesh right together. There we go. Now I'm going to, on the other side, there's a washer and a nut here that tightens uh, that little spindle in place. Let me get those tightened up. Now I'm going to put the hand wheel on. There is a key on this. You got to get lined up just right. I can put a nut on there and we can tighten that in the rest of the way. And this is ready to go back onto the machine now. Um, I will note that there is a little spring that fits up in this bottom piece here and that puts some relief on there, but we'll mount that once we get everything else uh, up on here. Let's go over to the machine and put this assembly in place. All right, we're over on the front of the machine. This whole assembly fits up on this little pivot pin right here. And if you notice, it just kind of rocks back and forth. And I'll show you how that works here in just a minute. But before, let me go ahead and put this uh, nut on here that holds it all in place. I think this bigger nut actually goes on right here. All right, so again, that pivots. And down here below it, before we put the cam in that's gonna activate this, I need to put that little spring in on the bottom to put a little spring tension on it. So again, there's just a little uh, screw with a spring on it that fits up in a hole on the bottom here and that puts a little spring pressure on that pin there on the bottom so that it will 
want to automatically kind of disengage itself. All right, so whenever it cams up, you got a little spring pressure to pull it back down. And next up is this piece here. This is the cam that will engage this whole rack and pinion system. here on the end of this it tightens it in place now how this works is is on the table there's a rack and pinion on the bottom when you turn the handle here of course it turns that whole gear set there and that's what moves the table back and forth now to engage it you turn this little cam it cams up now it's engaged in the table. This will be when you're in manual mode. And to disengage it, you turn that, down, that knob down and the cam lowers it down, it's spring loaded. So that's all that that is right there. In most cases, the table's gonna be in automatic mode. So it's not really gonna be utilizing this, uh, but occasionally you do need to do it manually. I'm going to get a little oil and put on this and kind of lube that up and see if that'll spin a little bit better. The problem is, is this uh, little pinion gear back here. It's just not like it needs to be. And I think what we're going to have to do is uh, make a new one of these gears. There's a little bit of, I think that shaft is just a little bit bent and it gets tight when it goes around. Plus these teeth are kind of worn and uh, not meshing like they should. So I have a feeling I'm gonna be taking this back apart and we're gonna be making this gear here as well. Um, but all in all, you can kind of see how this whole mechanism works. And uh, I'm pretty happy with that. I need to get it all tightened back up. And I think we're good to go. Well, the Thompson grinder is coming back together. Just a quick peek at it. Um, I've been slowly kind of putting things back together and getting things on there after we got the paint stripped off of this thing and got it repainted. Uh, the paint job turned out really nice and um, everything seems to be going back together pretty nicely. Uh, I am in the process of working on the electrical work on this right now to get everything hooked back up. I'm doing some rewiring. I'm probably doing a separate video on some of that. Some of that's in progress. Uh, so if you're looking at some of that stuff, uh, you'll probably see it in different stages before uh, where we are now and after where we are now because that video is still in progress. But uh, anyway, I just mentioned that. But it is coming along nicely and hopefully we'll have this thing back up and running before too much longer. Guys, with that, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. And a big, huge thank you out there to all the supporters of the site who support on Patreon and PayPal, as well as the subscribers who subscribe. If you haven't done already, hit that subscribe button, please, please, please. And uh, with that, guys, we're going to sign off. We will catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching.